Autumn Taggart was killed on June 9, 2018. The Windsor mom was only 31 years old. Her true love was Gavin, and he grew in to have the same sweet disposition that, that uh, she had. Living without Autumn has just left a, a huge, what we call just a gut-wrenching hole in our, in our lives. In the quiet town of Windsor, nestled along the border between the U.S. state of Michigan and the Canadian province of Ontario, a chilling crime unfolded on a fateful June night in 2018. The victim, a 31-year-old single mother named Autumn Taggart and her young son Gavin, would become entangled in a nightmare that would haunt them for years. Hi, and welcome back to Crime Case Files. Before we dive deep into Autumn Taggart's case, we would like to extend our most sincere condolences to her and her grieving family and friends. Our hearts go out to those who loved her, and we approach this investigation with the utmost respect and empathy for the tragedy they have endured. Autumn was a devoted mother, determined to shield her nine-year-old son from the pain of her separation from his father, Chris Sherwin. Despite the end of their romantic relationship, Autumn and Chris had managed to maintain an amicable co-parenting arrangement. Their focus remained on young Gavin's well-being. On a sunny Saturday afternoon in June 2018, the three of them spent quality time together. After an outing to the grocery store, Chris dropped Autumn and Gavin off at their third-floor apartment before heating back to his own residence. Gavin, a typical nine-year-old boy, spent his evening playing video games with his mother before drifting off to sleep, blissfully unaware that this ordinary night would soon descend into unimaginable horror. As darkness enveloped the apartment, Gavin was abruptly awakened by an unsettling noise. His eyes darted around the room, fear gripping his young heart. To his shock and terror, an unfamiliar and disheveled man loomed over his bed. The stranger's voice commanded Gavin to close his eyes and go back to sleep before slipping away into the shadows of the apartment. From his room, Gavin could hear his mother's anguished screams piercing the silence of the night. It was a sound he had never heard before, raw and gut-wrenching. It chilled him to his core. Paralyzed by fear, he could do nothing but listen. Minutes felt like hours as the horrifying ordeal unfolded beyond his bedroom walls. Gradually, the screams subsided into an eerie silence, leaving Gavin alone with his thoughts. Exhausted and overwhelmed, he eventually drifted back into a fitful slumber, trying to block out the terrifying reality of his mother's anguish. The sun's early rays painted a feeble light into Gavin's room as he woke the following morning. Uncertain and bewildered, he ventured into his mother's room. What he found there would shatter his innocence and change the course of his life forever. Autumn's room resembled a battlefield, a scene of utter chaos and destruction. Furniture lay overturned, belongings scattered, and the room bore the marks of a violent struggle. And there, lying motionless on the bed, was his mother. Her once vibrant face was now pale, marred by deep bruises, and her nose was bloody. Gavin's young mind struggled to comprehend the unthinkable. His mother was dead. The shock and disbelief washed over him, but the grim reality began to sink in. How could this have happened? Gavin retreated to the solace of his video games and YouTube videos, seeking refuge from the harsh truth that his mother's life had been brutally taken in the next room. As the day wore on, the weight of his mother's absence grew unbearable. Gavin's grief and confusion finally drove him to take action. With a trembling hand, he entered his mother's room once more, this time retrieving her phone. He knew her password and quickly found his father, Chris Sherwin, in her messenger contacts. He sent a message, a plea for help, describing his mother's lifeless state. The shock and disbelief washed over him, but the grim reality began to sink in. How could this have happened? Chris immediately dialed 911. The authorities wasted no time dispatching both police and paramedics to the address. The paramedics, upon arriving, found themselves with a grim task, pronouncing Autumn Taggart dead. 
The injuries on her body and the disarray in her bedroom left little doubt that a heinous crime had been committed. Forensic investigators descended upon the apartment, meticulously scouring for any shred of evidence that might shed light on the perpetrator and the motive behind this horrific act. Meanwhile, detectives turned their attention to Gavin, carefully listening to the young boy's account of the night's events. Gavin's description of the intruder was haunting, an unknown, unshaven man of medium height, appearing disheveled as if he had just risen from slumber. The most chilling detail was that this man had stood beside Gavin's bed, instructing him to sleep before vanishing into the night. Gavin had helplessly listened as his mother's screams filled the air, only to abruptly cease. The investigation posed perplexing questions. How had the intruder gained access to the apartment? What motivated this heinous act? Most critically, who was the perpetrator? The initial theory that the assailant had a key to the building or Autumn's apartment was swiftly discarded. Gavin recognized the neighbors, and the man he saw that night was undoubtedly not one of them. Further inquiry led to a startling revelation. The perpetrator had seemingly scaled the building from the outside. Climbing from the second-floor balcony to the third, the assailant entered the apartment unhindered. No signs of forced entry were found on the apartment door, suggesting that either Autumn had willingly let the intruder in or the door had been left unlocked. Detectives turned to technology to aid their investigation, scrutinizing cell phone activity in the vicinity of Autumn's home on that fateful night. The late-hour timing of the crime proved advantageous, as it significantly reduced the pool of potential witnesses and suspects. With a dearth of active phone numbers in the vicinity, investigators homed in on those who had been awake during the night. One particular phone number drew their attention. It belonged to a neighbor of Autumn's, a woman named Michelle, residing on the same floor. When questioned, Michelle initially professed ignorance about the crime. However, her unusual phone activity painted a suspicious picture. Michelle had not only been on the phone, but had moved around town multiple times that night. Furthermore, her phone had been powered off around the time of the crime. Detectives remained skeptical, suspecting that she might be withholding vital information. Under mounting pressure, Michelle finally divulged her connection to the events of that dreadful night. She recounted an encounter with a man named Jay, a night marked by questionable activities. Jay had sought to purchase a banned substance and expressed an interest in hiring a prostitute. Together with her boyfriend, Michelle had accompanied Jay on a seemingly innocuous outing, which took them to an ATM where he withdrew cash. However, the situation quickly took a darker turn. Jay requested more of the illicit substance, which Michelle's boyfriend provided. With tensions rising, Michelle and her boyfriend left Jay at the ATM and returned home, eager to disassociate themselves from his erratic behavior. This newfound information introduced another player into the unfolding tragedy. Jay, whose last name was soon revealed as Jitesh Bogle, became a person of interest. Surveillance footage from the ATM corroborated Michelle's account, providing critical evidence that placed Jitesh Bogal in the vicinity on the night of the crime. Authorities rapidly intensified their efforts to locate Jitesh Bogal. Yet, they soon discovered that he had vanished, leaving behind only a trail of digital breadcrumbs. He had changed his appearance, shed his old life, and sold his vehicle, making it challenging for investigators to track his movements. Months passed, and hope of capturing the elusive suspect seemed to dim. However, the authorities' perseverance paid off when, in August 2018, Jitesh Bogle was apprehended on the other side of the country, in Washington State. It was a seemingly innocuous traffic stop that led to his capture. Pulled over by police for a minor infraction, Jitesh was taken into custody for an outstanding warrant. As he sat in the Washington jail, he faced the daunting prospect of extradition back to Michigan, where he would be held accountable for the murder of Autumn Taggart. Jitesh Pogel's trial, which began in November 2021, captivated the community and drew national attention. The courtroom was filled with a palpable tension as the prosecution laid out its case against the accused. 
Jitesh Bogle's defense team argued that the murder was not premeditated but rather the tragic result of a series of missteps and unfortunate circumstances. Bogal maintained that he had mistaken Autumn Taggart for Michelle, one of the individuals who had robbed him earlier that night. He asserted that he had been intoxicated, his judgment impaired, when he encountered Autumn in her apartment. In a dramatic turn of events, Jitesh Bogal took the stand in his own defense, sharing his version of that dreadful night. He spoke of feeling threatened and cornered by a group of individuals who had robbed him, leaving him shaken and desperate. When he entered Autumn's apartment, he believed he was confronting the same individuals, leading to a deadly confrontation born of fear and confusion. The prosecution vehemently countered these claims, arguing that the evidence pointed unequivocally to a premeditated act. The climbing of the apartment building and the intentional targeting of Autumn were cited as proof that this was no accidental encounter. Moreover, the DNA evidence found on Autumn's body was inconsistent with Jitesh Bogal's account of events. As the trial progressed, a chilling picture of the crime began to emerge. The prosecution argued that Jitesh Bogal had stalked Autumn, gaining access to her apartment with a sinister purpose. The presence of his boot prints on the roof of her car further indicated a deliberate act of invasion. Witness testimonies and expert forensic analysis bolstered the prosecution's case. The boot prints found on Autumn's car roof were matched to Jitesh Bogal's footwear. The male DNA found on Autumn's body, while insufficient for a complete profile, pointed to Jitesh Bogal as a potential contributor. Ultimately, the jury faced the arduous task of determining Jitesh culpability in Autumn Taggart's murder. They listened intently to both sides of the harrowing story, examining the evidence and the testimonies with a discerning eye. After weeks of riveting courtroom drama, the moment of reckoning arrived. In December 2021, the jury delivered their verdict, a verdict that would determine the course of Jitesh Bogal's life. Guilty, they declared, of first-degree deprivation of life. The courtroom erupted in a mix of emotions, Relief, sorrow, and justice served. Jitesh Bogle was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 25 years before he would be eligible for parole. The Taggart family, torn apart by the horrifying events of that tragic night, could finally find some measure of closure and solace in knowing that their beloved Autumn's memory had been vindicated. The case of Autumn Taggart's murder serves as a stark reminder of the darkness that can infiltrate even the most tranquil of communities. It showcases the tireless dedication of law enforcement and the justice system in pursuing the truth, no matter how elusive it may seem. And it underscores the enduring resilience of a young boy who, in the face of unimaginable trauma, played a pivotal role in seeking justice for his mother. Amidst the darkness and tragedy that shrouded Autumn Taggart's untimely death, there emerges a poignant lesson, a testament to the power of resilience and unwavering pursuit of justice. Gavin, the young son of Autumn, demonstrated an incredible strength in the face of unspeakable loss. His courage to reach out for help and his unwavering commitment to seeing justice serve it serve as an inspiration. Even in the darkest of moments, the voice of a child can bring light and truth to the surface. This true crime story highlights the dedication and persistence of law enforcement and the justice system in their relentless pursuit of the truth. No matter how elusive justice may seem, the story of Autumn Taggart's murder shows that determination can lead to accountability. It serves as a reminder that even in the face of the most heinous acts, there is hope for resolution. In the end, justice prevailed and the memory of Autumn was vindicated. The lesson here is clear. In the pursuit of truth and justice, resilience can be a formidable force, capable of bringing solace to the grieving and closure to the darkest of chapters.